Jeff Carter came back to Los Angeles. We all had a lot of feelings, and the game did not go, I think, as anyone planned. We're going to talk about it on today's episode of Locked On Los Angeles Kings. You are Locked On Kings, your daily podcast on the Los Angeles Kings, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. My name is Sarah Avampato, host of this show, and as, as always, I'm excited, perhaps even more excited than usual, uh, to be here with you for this show, uh, because, guys, WTF. Like, if you didn't see the game on Thursday night against the Penguins, I highly recommend you go back and listen and, and, and watch it, or watch the GIFs at least. Um, it, it was wild. We're going to talk about that on today's show uh, as we look at all the great things that the Kings did uh, in that game. Uh, you, uh, you're, we're, yeah. Anyway, I am joined by a frequent guest contributor slash partner in crime slash, uh, you know, that guy, uh, Jason Hernandez from Locked on Ducks uh, on loan from Anaheim uh, today for the show. Uh, maybe, uh, maybe drag him to the game. <laughs> and uh, I don't know if I'm allowed to say that on the show, but I am. Uh, and uh, figured I could use another set of eyes, uh, yeah. another set of words yeah. on the podcast to uh, talk about the game. So I want to get like the big blonde elephant in the room out of the way first. Uh, and that is that this was Jeff Carter's return to Los Angeles for the first time oh, since Jeff. he was traded. Oh, Jeff. Uh, it was... I like it was good, but bittersweet, but it was, sad. It was everything you imagined. It was. It really was. Uh, first off, a bajillion Pens fans at this game, uh, and a, a lot of Kings fans who were very excited to see Jeff Carter. They, of course, did the like ceremonial welcome back video at the first media timeout. Jeff did a little bit of like, I'm not wiping away a tear kind of thing. Um, it was a good video. Uh, obviously, you know, guys from the past pop up on the video to say hi. Very emotional moment, whatever. Uh, and then, uh, you know, the rest of the game continued to happen. So, yeah. By the way, nice jersey you were wearing. Yeah, yeah. I had, uh, obviously, Jeff Carter jersey um, from the Stadium Series, actually. Uh, so that was a nice little fun touch. Figured I would bust that one out for this game. Uh, but, yeah, Jeff Carter's return to Staples Center it didn't go exactly how he wanted it to go, I'm going to guess. Uh, he tried. He tried. He tried a lot. Yeah. Uh, first off, I did find it a little odd that he, uh, Mike Sullivan didn't give him the opening face-off. I feel like yeah, usually... that was weird. Usually when, you know, guys go back, like Tyler Toffoli was out on the top line for Montreal when that game happened. Like, usually, you know, the coach of the visiting team or whoever knows, like, ah, eh, let's give this guy his, you know... 13 seconds in the sun before we pull him off for the line shift. But, uh, yeah, Carter did not get that opening face off. And that's why they lost. That, that's why they <laughs> lost. It's on you, Mike Sullivan, uh, for, for that choice. But so that was a little weird, uh, but whatever. Uh, but yeah, Jeff Carter tried his, his hardest in this game. Uh, he actually, he uh, seven shots in this game. Yes. So peak Jeff Carter, uh, he has always been the guy who likes to have the puck on his stick and always likes to be, you know, making shots and making dangerous shots. And yeah. he certainly had the most out of all of the Penguins. For what it's worth, they were high dangerous shots, too. Mm -hmm. I mean, they were high quality. Mm -hmm. The Pens did a good job of feeding him in that home plate area. Just none of them went through. It was it was weird. Yeah. And we, at, at one point in the game, when it was tied 2-2, before everything sort of, like, imploded and for for in favor of the kings uh you know i was thinking back on my prediction with hunter and how i was like well this clearly is a game that's going to go to overtime and jeff carter overtime game winning goal i mean how many times have we seen him uh through his years with the kings a lot put in a lot yeah, a lot just like really i mean here locked on kings after dark just really hot goals like wow. <laughs> I'm not, wrong. You're not um, wrong. And so I was like, well, that is like the perfect ending 
to this game obviously would have been well i mean perfect except for the fact that the kings would have lost but i really thought that that's what we were heading for uh was jeff carter overtime game winner but uh and i would have blamed you for it that's <laughs> completely i would have blamed hunter for it so yeah 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 i had a nice little back and forth with hunter during the game host yeah. of locked on penguins uh, we we had a back and forth because just as i was about to text him messaging saying Mark Dunk after the second goal for the Penguins because that was a random goal, wasn't it? Yeah, it was uh, uh, Radim Zahorna. Yeah. <laughs> it was his first goal of the season. Uh, and I was I, I like... Think I, I think I yelled out, Mark Dunk! You absolutely did, yes. <laughs> it was a stupid goal, too. It, I mean, both of their goals were kind of stupid. They were. Yeah. I mean, John Quick did kind of save the day. Who was this John Quick tonight? Who was he? Like, he was unbelievable i know that like sometimes they're like there's some kings fans that are kind of getting frustrated with the narrative around jonathan quick this season because you know in some sense it is the team kind of holding on to the past and like you do eventually need to rip that band-aid off and and move on but at the same time he's been playing so good that like what other choice does the team have like they're they not gonna play Cal all oh, weights right I mean, well I mean Cal did great in like the last two games that he played like it seems like he's getting back on he's getting the back right on track his feet, but, but like he's still not the best goalie that the Kings have right now no but at the, at, I'm sorry at the moment he's not the best goalie the Kings have right yeah that's a fair assessment yeah it's a totally fair assessment but yeah quick was ridiculous including the one save where the shot kind of trickled through him. Oh, and it was kept sliding it was and then sitting. stopped right on the goal line. It sat there yeah. at the goal line for a good second. Mm -hmm. And he looked behind him, kind of went, oh crap. Yeah. And just like put his yeah. glove on top of it, pushed it forward. And we saw a look on replay of that. It was super close. Yeah, I thought until they showed the overhead view of it. I could have sworn that we were going to get the, like, 45 seconds later Toronto buzzer yeah. saying, hey, there was a goal. But, yeah, the, the overhead was very clear that there was no goal. But, like, I mean, I feel like every time I do a crossover with another host or uh, talking with anyone, the question is always, what has gotten into Jonathan Quick? So, like, what – and I know what my answer usually is, mm -hmm. but what is your answer? Uh, my answer, like, honest answer – He's kind of found his health a little bit more, mm -hmm. where he doesn't have any nagging ailments. He hasn't had any complaints about that at all this season. Mm -hmm. So that's part one. Part two, some of the shots that he's faced this season, they're kind of more in his wheelhouse this season. That's something that I know is not talked about a lot. But teams are not going for any of his weaknesses at mm -hmm. all. So that's part of it. And even then, he has made little adjustments here and there, very slight, where he doesn't have that little hitch that he used to have maybe like nine, ten years ago. Mm -hmm. And he kind of sits back a little bit more and has more patience in the crease. Mm -hmm. That's been something, something that I've noticed out of Jonathan Quick this season yeah. compared to last season. Yeah, there is much less of the like, I mean, he always gives me anxiety. That's just his goalie style is chaotic. But he's not doing it as much yes. as he used yes. to. Yeah, he's more in position because, I mean, yeah, the thing always is, oh, wow, look at that crazy save he just had to make. And that's true of any goalie. But you wouldn't have had to make that crazy save had you been in the right position in the first place. But, yeah, I feel like I'm noticing less of that. Uh, he still plays so deep in his net that I feel like you don't see goalies play like that much anymore. Right. It's kind of weird to, to see. But, yeah, whatever he whatever he did, bravo, man. <laughs> He looked good. He looked he looks phenomenal tonight. Yeah. So A plus Jonathan Quick. This game could have gotten a lot more out of hand uh, had he not made some pretty crucial stops. We'll yeah. talk more about the game, about some performances from the Kings, uh, including uh, a debut NHL performance uh, from one of our young forwards coming up after this. But before we get into that, let's first talk about snacks. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So if you had to have a snack and you're like, I only have one food item I can carry with me and I have one very small rectangular shaped pocket, what would that food snack be? That food snack would be the Built Bar Puffs. 
Just specifically, mm -hmm. the Built Bar Puffs. Mm -hmm. I think they taste delicious. Mm -hmm. I'm looking at a white chocolate cheesecake right in front of me. There's also the Churro Puff that's in the other room. But man, those are amazing. So if you don't know what a Built Bar is, it is a protein bar that tastes like a candy bar, or in some cases, cheesecake, or in some cases, a churro. Uh, and it is super delicious. They are high in protein, high fiber, low calories, low sugar, covered in all 100% real chocolate. Uh, and they're just the greatest. If you're looking for a quick snack, if you're looking for something to keep you from getting hangry, I had one on an airplane the other day because the, there was turbulence and they couldn't serve us snacks. So I was like, I came with my own. Uh, so they come in tons of great flavors and really anything you could imagine, any possible flavor you can imagine, they have either had or will have in the future. So you could go to built.com and check out all that they have. What should our listeners do? They should use promo code LOCKED15 to get 15% off their next order of Built Bar. All right, so that is Built.com, promo code LOCKED15, and what else should they do? Eat responsibly. All right. Okay, wanted to keep talking about the game against the Penguins where the Kings, in case you missed it, because I don't even know that I actually gave you the final score in this one. <laughs> a lot to a little. A lot to a little. 6-2 was the final score for the Kings. And I think that before we go on to any of the other like great moments or fun, cool things that we saw in this game, we have to talk about the stretch in the third period Okay. that saw four goals. Well, three. Yeah, four goals in three minutes. Yeah. And... Three of them in a minute and a half from the Kings. So let me go through what I was going for in the third period. Yeah. First, there was that random Mark Donk goal. And just as I was typing Mark Donk to Hunter, then the game got completely <laughs> BS crazy, as they would say. Mikey, Mikey Anderson. We like Mikey. He got his first goal of the season. That was a pretty good goal. That was so long. I Like... He's been so, I mean, he's not an offensive defenseman. Like, no. we, we know that. But I, you're like, is it ever going to happen at this point? <laughs> no, and you and I talked during the game where Mikey Anderson had some good shifts, but there was some shifts where he was kind of getting beat a little bit. Mm -hmm. But for him to get off the schneid, his first of the season, from the blue line, no mm -hmm. less, maybe Christian Yari, maybe he could have stopped it because there wasn't a whole lot of screens on that particular goal. Yes, Kempe was right there, but Kempe, if I remember correctly, Kempe was on Yari's right, and he hadn't crossed past him yet. Yari saw it. He just got beat on that one. But that's my observation on that one. I mean, I saw Mikey Anderson do a thing, yeah. and then everyone yelled, so... I know, but I'm, I'm super observant when it comes to stuff like that, especially a former Reign player like Mikey Anderson, who I've been rooting for since I saw him play in Ontario. <laughs> I'll admit it, like... Even though I work the games, like there are guys who just try super hard and they really gravitate towards trying to make little improvements. And he's done that at times, even though, as you've said on the podcast, it's been a tough year for him. Yeah, he struggled, but it was good to see him get that goal and hopefully that puts him uh, back on the right path. And then the, the, the thing that coaches hate, 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 hate happening happened. In this game because kings <laughs> score next shift ten kings seconds. go back out there 10 seconds later <laughs> kings score again I, like i didn't i wasn't watching mike sullivan on the bench for the penguins but i'm pretty sure that like he probably internally wanted to like explode i didn't watch him after the king's third goal but i watched after the king's fourth goal he was apoplectic there's your ten dollar word nice. there your wordle word of the day it's not five letters but victor arvidson scoring right there made Sullivan just go a little bit nuts there because he's like, wait a minute, like guys get it together. But that wasn't the goal that I thought was most concerning against the Penguins. It was the goal a minute later. <laughs> Andre Kopitar with his 11th of the season, they crashed the net on that one a little bit, didn't they? Yeah. That, that goal was just, I didn't know that it was Kopitar at first who put it in because there was just, a sea of bodies there in front of the net and someone got it and then you know you're like oh it's good and he just had like this crap eating face oh yeah because he knew he got it yeah and he like because we were pretty close 
like I'm kind of watching Kopitar. He's kind of like smirking and then smiling. Kind of just like, uh, yeah, that was definitely mine. And luckily, I think it was, yeah, I think it was Jersey that kind of like pointed right at him mm -hmm. and said, yeah, that was good. Yeah. But can we talk about that Arvidsson fourth, goal, the fourth goal of the game? Yes, please. Because go ahead. it wasn't just about Victor Arvidsson scoring that goal. The reason I got super excited about that goal, and Sarah can attest to this because I was yelling for this, is because we had a local boy make the perfect pass on that. That was Thousand Oaks native, you gotta, you gotta say his full mm -hmm. name, mm -hmm. Thousand Oaks native Trevor Moore. Not just Trevor Moore, Thousand Oaks native Trevor Moore. I hope Had, it's on his birth certificate. I hope so too. He made the perfect pass across the Royal Road, just right on the tape of Arvidsson. That was a thing of beauty. I have follows past to Kopitar, also at the right spot at the right time. Yeah, and Kopitar, by the way, that was his second goal of the game because he actually opened scoring for uh, the Kings uh, back up in the first period uh, and was his first goal since, like, early December, mid-December or something. Yeah, it's been a Which, while. I mean, you know, there was that big long break in the middle, but still, it's something like eight games or something without a goal and the first goal that he scored in the first period he just looked relieved to have finally <laughs> scored again kind of got that one off his back uh and you know played a really strong game today and got rewarded for it mm -hmm. absolutely that okay that was at the point of the game where i thought one of two things was going to happen and we talked about this earlier but let's talk about this with the fans should there have been a goalie change there Probably not because it was too late in the game for that. What kind of message would you send there? But I absolutely thought that Pittsburgh should have called a timeout for this reason. It could have rallied the troops and could have possibly gotten their offensive game back. There was no timeout there. And you know what happened? The Kings kept shooting. They kept control of the puck. Pittsburgh looked pretty dead in the water after that. They should have called a timeout and didn't. So Kings fans... Sully kind of did you a favor there by not calling a timeout, not calming down his troops. He kind of threw the white flag after that, I thought. Yeah, I feel like that that was surprising because you're used to seeing teams, you know, you get two, two, two against you in quick succession and there's always a like, okay, take a breather, reset. Yeah, I don't think that a goalie change, you know, despite the like... Bronx cheer and chirping that uh, Jari was getting <laughs> from some of the fans at uh, Don't Call Me Staples Center. Uh, I wouldn't pit, like this. This loss wasn't on him. Uh, it just was the Penguins just had no oomph in their game. That's your all star goalie, Pittsburgh. I mean, it's not, he, he tried hard, but like, he, so if you would have pulled him, it would have been more of a like wake up call to the rest of the team rather than wow, this goalie sure sucks tonight. But yeah, it's you know the third period. It wouldn't have, I don't think it would have done much. What were the shots on goal in that second and third period? Because I think there was a noticeable difference in shots between periods two and period three. Oh, there you go. So the Kings had 20 shots in the second period, 15 in the third. And 15, or sorry, four of those shots came in those early minutes. I thought the timeout would have helped. And it didn't. It certainly didn't. Oh well. Yeah. So it was. It, it was the game. It it was a thing. Yeah. Whole thing. It got was, drunk. It, the game got drunk. Uh, we're gonna close out the show with some final parting thoughts on uh, this game and uh, touch on some performances from our young players uh, coming up right after this. But first, I bet I bet no one saw this game coming. No. Would you like to tell me more? I would bet that maybe the Kings were maybe the slight underdog on this one. You know, we could have made a pretty penny on this. Mm -hmm. We really could have. Mm -hmm. You know where those latest lines are? I wonder. BetOnline.ag, which is where the game starts, by the way. Mm -hmm. And going into the new year, you have the NHL in full swing. You have football. You have basketball. Baseball is dead to us. <laughs> but baseball is dead to everybody, folks. You also have boxing and the UFC right to your favorite Vegas casino games. How about that? Yeah. So whatever it is that you are into, you can find it on betonline.ag. They've got a brand shiny new website for the new year. 
Uh, so you can check it out on your phone, on your computer, on your like, I don't know, fancy smartwatch, whatever it is. Go and check out betonline.ag, your number one spot for all of the best sports wagering action for 2022. You can go to betonline.ag, use the promo code locked on to get started and receive a 50% welcome bonus. That's Sean Dursey's number. It is. We're going to talk about him later. Oh, yeah. Yeah. 50% yeah. welcome bonus on your first deposit. So that is betonline.ag. Dot ag the fastest and easiest way to wager on all of your favorite sports promo code locked on at betonline.ag where the game starts please gamble responsibly all right so gonna close out the show today by looking at some of our young players and we'll get the coolest one out of the way first can i say the line um yeah sure but like in a chill way not in a okay hashtag let the kids play yeah, and we're seeing that. We're seeing that with the Kings. Uh, it's, you know, circumstances beyond their control because of COVID and injuries. Yep. Uh, but, hey, it is forcing their hand. It is forcing these young players into the lineup, which, you know, we I saw a couple of tweets going around after the game. And, you know, Kings fans are right about it. That The team has been very cautious with their prospects, and they've been willing to wait way longer maybe than uh, other teams would and definitely longer than fans want to wait. Uh -huh. But they, but they, you know, it, it's, it's paying off now because now all the kids are knocking at the door and making it really hard to take any of them out of the lineup. I think Sean Darcy is a great example of I that. I will let you borrow the hashtag for the show. Just for, just the, for this, just for, just this, for episode. this episode. Yeah. Yes. Um, but we're seeing these young guys break into the lineup and show like, you know, Alex Tricot came in and hasn't been back out of a game. He's looked Yes. Turcott had some good shifts. Yes, we'll talk about him in a minute. Yeah. yeah. Um, but the unexpected young player to get into the game tonight uh, was Samuel Fugimo, who got to make his yeah. uh, season day, well, career yeah. debut yeah. in the NHL. He has been kind of in the, like, taxi squad, extra guy, hasn't gotten into a game yet kind of player. Uh, and we all sort of thought, oh, he's probably not going to get into this one, too. And when he got called back up, but sort of a game time decision. Uh, Brendan Lemieux is out with some sort of non COVID illness. They weren't more specific than that, but that opened yeah. up a spot. I don't know, whatever. Uh, but opened up a spot on the roster. And uh, good old Sammy from Ontario uh, got put in. So, what did you, you are, of course, someone who has seen him all the time mm -hmm. uh, with the rain. Yes. What did you think of his debut NHL performance? Uh, his scoring streak came to an end tonight. <laughs> so, before playing on. On the game, he had a three-game goal streak, actually, before that game. He figured very importantly in the game against the San Diego goals last weekend. On tonight's game, I noticed that I mean, there was some apprehension, but that's natural for a first game. He did get a couple of good attempts in there, and he seemed to flow with the offense pretty well. I thought McClellan did a pretty decent job deploying him in the second period, especially. He did a good job deploying him at that point where I thought, okay, like he's starting to look comfortable out there. He's starting to get some minutes out there. He only played 12, yeah, about 12 minutes tonight. But he looked fine. He looked fine on that line with Blake Lazat. And I thought there were a couple moments where Fagimo and Lazat, like Blake, mm -hmm. his kind of fit ferocity on the blue line kind of got contagious. Mm -hmm. And then you saw Fagimo mm -hmm. start to get in there, kind of mix it up a little bit. So I like seeing that. Uh, he also had some pretty sound defense tonight, by the way. This is something else that I have liked about Sammy's game mm -hmm. all throughout Ontario season, is he's pretty good on the back check, and he's fairly responsible. But, you know, he's still young. Yeah. He's still learning. Yeah. But, yeah, I feel like for a first NHL game, uh, he acquitted himself well. Like, I didn't... You know, sometimes it's like when you talk about defensemen and you're like, oh, I didn't even notice him. And that's usually a good thing. I feel like that was sort of what I saw from him. I didn't, there weren't many moments where I was like, oh, bud, like what you doing there? I think that he, he was fine. I, I liked the fact that he was on a line with Kaliev, who he has a lot of familiarity with from their time in Ontario. I think, I'm sure they've played together at yep. points. Yep. Uh, so, you know, I think that would be... Really, it would have been really fun if they had thrown Turcot onto that line and then just had an Ontario rain line. But, you know, for a first NHL game, I was excited. I think that he had only credited with one shot, but certainly had uh, several more attempts that just didn't quite hit the mark. But, That's all right. Yeah, but great, great opening opening shot from, 
from uh, Sammy Fugima, who is, uh, yeah, showing that he should probably stick up here maybe at some point. I think so. I, I think the way that they're approaching Samuel from just a development standpoint, mm -hmm. I think they're bringing him up at exactly the right time. Mm -hmm. Get his feet wet. Maybe give him his few games mm -hmm. and see what happens. Yeah. So we have, uh, we also talked a little bit about uh, Arthur, or not Arthur, um, what's his name? <laughs> we also talked a little bit about Alex Turcotte and his performance in this game. Uh, he, you know, there were definitely, this was definitely a tale of two Alex Turcotte games. It was a Jekyll and Hyde yes. game, for sure. Yeah, because there were definitely a lot of moments where you saw him playing with, like, aggression's not really the right word, but, like, a, a fire under him. Uh, he was getting into scrums with guys bigger than him. He was in the corners. He was going for puck, puck battles and everything. Uh, and it's, you know, kind of the thing that you, like, you know that the Kings have wanted to see from him, but they don't always see consistently. And then there were a couple of times he got finessed. Yeah, but by, by who? By Chris Latane. Exactly. <laughs> like, and in fairness... Like, I, I definitely noticed that. I, yeah. I think I said out loud, oh, Chris Letang is schooling this kid. Yeah, and <laughs> like, you know, that that's a very, it, you know, I'm not going to compare Chris Letang to Connor McDavid, but like, there's always like, a guy goes up against, a, you know, 18, 19, 20 year old kid, first NHL game, you know, first five games. <laughs> that's your welcome to the NHL Right, moment. and then you get like, torched by Connor McDavid or something, and you're like, well, hi, NHL. Yeah, I mean, Turcotte got torched by Letang, but... He's one of the premier players in the NHL. Yeah. What Still was the stat that you had pointed out earlier? So here's a fun stat for the Pens fans. The only good thing about the Pens. I'm kidding. <laughs> There's some good about the Pens. So I found this interesting. That the trio of Chris Letang, Evgeny Malkin, and Sidney Crosby, just the game against the Ducks, broke an NHL record for the longest tenured trio sticking together. 16 seasons. Can you believe that all three of them have played 16 seasons together on the Penguins? It's unbelievable. A, for two reasons. A, every year, both a segment of Penns fans and a segment of Penns media spend 75% of the year trying to trade Malkin and Latang. Mm -hmm. Every year, there's one particular guy in, in particular on Twitter who's a media person for Pittsburgh, who I have blocked, so I never have to see his bad opinions, uh, who has b basically been saying for years that the Penguins need to trade Evgeny Malkin and get rid of him before, like, whatever. Ducks fans disagree with that. Yeah, well, yeah. <laughs> uh, and then B, B of all, um, like, I still remember being in college and getting phone calls from my mom being like, oh, did you see the nice young boy that uh, Pittsburgh just drafted? His name's Sydney. He's supposed to be really good. And, like, here we are now. I was in college when that happened, too. And I saw that draft. And my friends were like, oh, is this kid supposed to be really good? Like, that high of a draft pick? And look where he is now. Yeah. So <laughs> crazy. I know. But, yeah. So Alex Turcotte, like, yeah, had a little bit of a rough game. But, I mean, who? Everyone's it's up against the Hall of Fame. Right, exactly. So, you know, whatever. Yeah. Sorry, Alex. Yeah. <laughs> um that's La your initiation into yeah. the league. Yeah, welcome. Um, last young guy that I wanted to talk about, uh, Sean Dersey. Yeah. Who scored the final goal for the Kings off of the faceoff from the blue line, laser of a shot, just like, <laughs> whoop, into the net. He looked so happy after that yeah. goal. <laughs> after the goal. And it was like happy, but like the no reaction kind of happy of just like pointing, like, okay. He just... Well, I also mimicked what he did. Yeah. <laughs> like, I'll admit, I was mimicking the crowd. Sean Jersey just did the whole, like, point to the goal. Mm -hmm. The referee, like, that was a good goal. Yeah. <laughs> and he knew it, too. Yeah. He knew that was his. Yeah. So he, he has been, you know... Yeah. I, I'm such a huge fan of Sean Jersey, yeah. by the way. And he, you know, we have spent a lot of time wondering which of the young uh, defensive prospects was going to jump in and s just steal. Because we, we knew we had one open spot for the whole year. Because of Sean Walker's injury. Yep. And it seems like the search is over and Sean Dersey cannot and should not come back out of the lineup. Nope. Yeah. No. He he should not come back to Ontario. Stay in Los Angeles. That's where he belongs. 
by far. Yeah, and he he looks like he gets more comfortable with every game. I love watching him, especially in the power play along the blue line. Yes, um, I, 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 oh. I it's one of my favorite things to watch anyone on the power play. Oh, of, oh can, can I say it? Can I? Say can it? I? Can I? Yeah. Ask? Sorry. Yeah. 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 Um, but you know, watching you know watching anyone patrol that blue line and make crazy moves to keep pucks in and keep the puck moving on the power play is just always really. Like, A, because I'm like, how did you even do that? Like, it's just really fun for me to watch. And he makes so many of those great little plays every game. And I love it. Okay, now go say and whatever. To pig, and to piggyback yes. on that, because what you said was yes. perfect, actually. Yes, thank you. You're welcome. Where not just the keeping the puck in, but the awareness mm -hmm. to look and make the right pass at the right time. There was one moment, I think, in the third period where the Kings were on the power play. And I noticed that Jersey would kind of, like, not wait too long where he would make the decision, okay, nothing works there, I'm going to go this way, and try to get a tic-tac-toe play. There was an almost seventh goal for the Kings. It That's was that, right. It was that tic-tac-toe play, mm -hmm. and that was started by Jersey mm -hmm. making the right pass from the blue line at the moment. So it could have easily been seven or eight goals for the Kings on that one. And I think that's a play that I wanted to highlight yeah. just because of the awareness. Yeah. That's something that he's improved on a lot, I think. So yeah. I've just been on the, on the Jersey train all pretty much all season and one final thought speaking of power plays you know the penguins have the number one apparently the number one rated penalty kill in the entire nhl they were at a 91 percent clip before this game oh what happened with that <laughs> speaking of penalty killing they're back down to second. Oh wow! <laughs> oh, eighty nine point nine percent. Yeah, I like. I legitimately was in the middle of a tweet, being like, kind of echoing a thought I had from the Ducks game, which was like, the Penguins should just keep taking penalties because it doesn't matter because no one can score on them. And then the Kings scored, so I I deleted that tweet. <laughs> but yeah, I was not expecting anything from the Kings uh, power play, which is uh, not good. By the way, uh, Kings power play, 25th in the league, 16.8%. Uh, they are down there with some other great teams like the Montreal Canadiens, who have won seven games this year, or the Arizona Coyotes, who have won eight games this year. They're going to lose 50. Yeah, so, you know, they're, they're not up there with uh, good teams with their power play. So that was really good to see. It was fun to chirp the, the Penguins fans there. Like, ha, that's your number one penalty killing team? Ha, ha, ha. That's your all-star goalie? Ha, ha, ha. You have to admit, it was fun. Yeah. And final thought, that goal on the power play scored by Dustin Brown, who hit a pretty big career milestone in this game. Number 700. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you for letting me quote tweet that, by the way. You're welcome. Yeah. That was a fun one to watch. Yeah. So congrats to Dustin Brown. Uh, congrats to Mikey Anderson for getting his first goal of the season. Finally, congrats to the Penguins for uh, existing. And for giving us these two points, it was really delightful. Thanks for letting us see Jeff Carter again. Take care of him. Yep. Um, uh, final final thought yes. about this game. Yes. Let's talk about the stat card really quick. Because oh, yeah, that's right. I was going to talk about numbers. Yeah. So this was kind of a fun one. Uh, if you go to Hockey Stat Cards, this is a really fun site. I I use it. Sorry, it's a lot of fun. Uh, let's let's get that out of there. Andre Kopitar had the high highest game score with 5.16, his expected goal was 1.44, so he scored more than was expected. But, you know, he had a good game. Game score of 5.16. Alex Ayafalo had a game score of 4.26. Adrian Kempe, the all-star rep for the Kings, 3.58, despite not scoring a goal. And finally, let's look at the Andre Kopitar card really quick. Before we do that, yes, can you explain in like two sentences what game score means. So a game score is an accumulation of the individual expected goals, the expected goals for versus the goals against. And the goals for has its own point value based on the value of each goal. So that's where that comes from. Uh, the game score also relies on face-offs as well. And that's the other reason why Andre Kopitar's is so high. His face-off score is a 10. And if you look way in the bottom of that list, Oh, there's Sidney Crosby at a negative 281 because his faceoff score was a negative 9. So it's a it's an accumulation of all of those microstats into one fancy little game score. It's it's fun. By the way, his highest game score, hmm, a game that I also went to, by the way, mm -hmm. just, you know, 
the opener against the Vegas Golden Knights. A game score of 6.37, the hat trick game. Hmm. His fourth highest was against the Habs. Hmm. Maybe I should go to more Kings games, huh? I think you should. Yeah. I think if, you should. If not for any other reason that Andre Kopitar does well when I go there. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. That was a fun night. It, it was a great cap to the week, sort of, even though the week's not over yet. Uh, excited to see the Kings actually looking like they're firing on all cylinders. And uh, if you look at the standings right oh, now yeah. for the NHL, uh, Kings are currently third in the uh, in Uh-oh. the Pacific Division, Uh-oh. Uh, right behind oh, the Anaheim Ducks. Ducks. That's disgusting. Uh, so it's Kings, cl- it's close. It's close. Kings keeping keeping things rolling. They're they're treading water. All the teams below them uh, lost their most recent game. San Jose, Calgary, Edmonton, Vancouver, Seattle, all with losses on the books. So this is what we want to see from the Kings is them winning when the other teams that are trying to chase them are losing games. So that's great news as well, and I'm really excited about that. Uh, and then if you look at the Kings' schedule, the next couple of games feel like they should be winnable. Uh, Saturday they head to Seattle to take them on. Uh, yep. And then Monday, they are in uh, San Jose uh, playing the yep. Sharks. Uh, we're going to be talking, uh, we're talking with Erica Ayala after the Seattle game, so we're going to get a little bit of a recap with her. Squad um, cast. And then uh, we're going to be hopefully talking with uh, Sharks JD uh, from uh, the Chompy Boys uh, in advance of Monday's game to, uh, to see what's up with the Sharks. And hopefully we win both of those games and get points and further cement our spot in the playoffs. Do you have a brief... Final thought before we go. Maybe not a final thought, but a quick shout out. No. Uh, yes. <laughs> uh, shout out to all the fans that are heading up to Seattle this weekend. Uh, we did meet up with one fan. Uh, we should probably at least give him a shout out since he does listen to both of our shows. Mm-hmm. You know, we, we should. Mm-hmm. Uh, David Trudeau. Yo. Yo, a uh, fan of the podcast, heading up to Seattle to check out the Kings' first game at Climate Pledge Arena. So, to all the fans that are going out there, shout out to you guys going for that trip. You guys are all awesome. Sweet. Have fun. Don't throw any octopi or something. Whatever. Salmon. Salmon. Fish. Yeah. So, yeah. Have fun. Uh, Come back tomorrow for more uh, King's thoughts and feelings. And maybe tomorrow. I don't even know what day it is. Just keep listening to the show. (laughs) And uh, we'll... We know, we'll hang out some more. Uh, you can find me on Twitter at Right Said Sarah. Uh, the show is on Twitter at Locked on LA Kings. Where are you in case people want to yell at you about Troy Terry? Oh, God. So, first off, this episode was brought to you by the number six. As in, six goals against the Pens. <laughs> um, also, that is a rock. Uh, you can find my podcast. Uh, it is Locked on Anaheim Ducks. Let's see, the Twitter. My personal Twitter is at StimpyJD. Uh, they could see some Kings pictures on my personal Twitter, which it was a fun game. Mm-hmm. And the show's Twitter is at LO underscore Ducks, where I will be having feelings about Troy Terry not making the All-Star team WTF. But congrats to Adrian Kempe for making the All-Star team. We didn't talk about that. But no, we'll just mention it. We're we'll out of time. It. We'll just mention it. Congrats, Adrian Kempe. All right. So thank you for listening. Subscribe to the show, tell your friends all about it, and uh, keep listening for more Kings news here on Locked On Los Angeles Kings, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day.